What's up, glorious people? It's Chris here from Stage Zero, and I recently got to see Godzilla Minus One in theater. So, to start everything off, I believe that this was a very good movie. It is amazing to me that they were able to combine a war drama with a Godzilla movie. It is about two hours long, and... I never felt that it was kind of dragging on. I was very engaged. I was very interested in the movie. Um, so, yeah, I would say go and see it in theaters while it's still there. Because it's very good. I would also say if you have not already seen um, the documentary White Light, Black Rain, The Destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to go ahead and watch that documentary before you see Godzilla Minus One. Uh, this kind of goes in with uh, it goes through the attacks from the um, bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the nuclear weapons during World War II. And some of the imagery um, shown and talked about in that documentary is something that kind of plays within Godzilla Minus One. Godzilla has probably the best radioactive breath sequence that I've seen since Shin Godzilla where you see his dorsal spines like shoot up and he like powers up and he fires out this hugely powerful radioactive breath attack that blows up some of the tanks that were firing at him and there's this huge explosion very reminiscent of nuclear explosions as well and then there you know this this huge um, concussive blast kind of goes out from the from the epicenter. It pushes debris and people and everything are lost in it. And afterwards, there is also the black rain, which is like is said in the documentary, this bright white uh, light. Uh, I guess in this case, it's more of a blue light in Godzilla, but this bright flash from the explosion huge heat and concussive force that is coming out and then this black rain which is rain that has the ash and debris from the explosion in it which caused um which was essentially fallout it's radioactive it fell back down and then historically the people were using this water to drink because right after they were like you know burned and dehydrated because it like the heat was so intense it just sucked up all or destroyed all of the water and everything and just pushed it all away and because it was so hot and the people weren't aware of kind of the fallout i guess you probably knew there's something weird with this because it's probably ash but i guess at that point you didn't care uh it goes into a lot of the uh imagery and a lot of stuff that happened during the bombings which wasn't part of the Godzilla film, but still, you know, incredibly powerful. It even talks with the people um, who did the bombing runs as well on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the actual pilots. And uh, one of the things that kind of stuck with me is he's saying, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't feel bad or guilty. I feel like the nuclear attacks were something that was necessary however what really pisses me off are when people are saying oh we just need to nuke this nuke that and they're like flippantly using uh nuking someone or using nuclear weapons without really understanding the cost and the horrors that nuclear weapons have and a lot of that kind of plays into godzilla minus one godzilla um, when you see him, even though I guess Shin Godzilla was probably more closely related, but Godzilla still kind of looks, you know, irradiated and everything. He looks kind of like a lot of the imagery from White Light Black Rain, where the people who have been, uh, you know, they've gotten irradiated, they've been kind of burnt and everything from the blast, but still survived. Because, you know, they're far enough away to not instantly die or be killed from the explosion, but still getting irradiated. And they're kind of having to deal with this. Um, I guess I kind of go into spoiler territory here. Um, at the end of the movie, the movie is a happy ending, of course. Um, kind of more so than even the Shin Godzilla, I would say. Um, but 
at one point, uh, one of the characters you, we have our kamikaze pilot, and we have another character who starts off as a thief. He kind of moves in with him. Uh, she is seen to possibly have died in the explosion where Godzilla is firing on the tanks that were firing on him. Uh, she suffices to the end, and you know she looks pretty much fine. I was just like, wow, you don't have any. You like got blown away by a large concussive blast, and you're just kind of like. She has, like, I guess, something over her, her eye, and she's, like, bandaged up and in a hospital bed. But I'm like, yeah, I would think you would have, like, you know, some radiation radiation or some burning or something. Uh, they do kind of show a close-up of her where it looks like there is, like, something black or something, on, like, on her neck, which might be some sign that she does have, like, some radiation poisoning and everything. Um... And then, of course, after they eventually uh, blow up Godzilla, because we have to blow up Godzilla, um, with our kamikaze pilot, who very, I guess, kind of like towards the end, another character, Doc, is giving a speech saying, you know, we had planes that didn't have ejection seats, and we used kamikaze pilots. I'm like, okay. So he, of course, because he thinks that uh, the thief has died, and, you know, they weren't, like, in a relationship, really. He was, like, because he was saying, you know, dealing with PTSD from the war. And his guilt of being a kamikaze pilot, he kind of, you know, I don't want to say chicken out. He decided not to go through with it and kind of used the excuse that there was an issue with his plane. So he landed on Odo Island. And... People are like, oh, you're a coward, you're a coward. He kind of comes home and his neighbor is like, oh, you, because of you, people, uh, my children are dead and your parents are dead too. Uh, the thief is like the one person who is like, hey, you should have survived because you survived. People who survive are meant to. You don't have to hold on to this guilt. But after she dies, he's like, kind of falls back into his deep depression. His friends are kind of worried about him. And he says, hey, uh, for this plan to take out Godzilla, can you give me a plane? He eventually tracks down one of the other people who was with him on the island. He's the only other survivor back when Godzilla was more the size of a Tyrannosaurus, even though I think he was supposed to be bigger. Um, but they find, and he's like, eventually he convinces the mechanic to help him out. And everything, but he thinks that because of this, she's dead. And after giving money to the neighbor lady for um, the child, I think is Akiko or Akiko, I think was the kid's name. Um, kind of his adoptive daughter, even though he's like, "Hey, I'm not your dad," you know. And they're like, "It's oh, kind of mean to say to the kid that you're not her dad." He's like, "Well, I'm not. I'm not her dad. She's not his mom. She's living here just because I let her stay after the war." And this kid was taken in by her and also by me to kind of help her survive because she didn't have anybody else. Um, yeah. So uh, this movie was really good. Um, the kind of happy ending towards the end and because I could kind of see around the time I started getting the speech about not having ejector seats, I'm like, we're going to have an ejector seat. And then, like, in the scene where he's saying, hey, uh, this right here, just pull this level, lever to uh, activate the bomb. And he and the guy's saying, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Part of me wants to live, but I'm going to do this. And he's kind of resigned to his fate. And then um, mechanic guy says, oh, you're finally ready. Oh, and there's one more thing. And then it kind of, you know, it's panning out. He's like, okay, one more thing to tell you. And I'm like, yep, he is going to have an injector seat. And they have this scene, and you kind of see that the ver there's like a split second where he's flying into Godzilla's mouth because the plan to sink Godzilla and bring Godzilla fast, uh, back up really fast, although it's kind of harmed him, he's still not dead, and he's still powering up his blast. Uh, he ejects right at the last second, fly the plane hits Godzilla's mouth, blows up, and Godzilla's like head's kind of blown off, and he's still kind of powering up, and it's like shining through his body, and he the body is just kind of disintegrating and falling apart. And the Japanese kind of salute Godzilla, <coughs> and 
and then they eventually say, Oh! Uh, our kamikaze pilot, he ejected, he's alive. And then after they get off, the neighbor lady comes and gives a telegram that came and starts hitting him because he was going to kill himself, but he decided not to at like the last second because a guy told him of about an ejection, an ejection seat button that was like in the plane. And he survived to be with uh, Akiko. And, oh, by the way, your wife girlfriend who's not really your wife or girlfriend has also uh survived um i think with the close-up with her like i said i think she might have maybe some radioactive poisoning or radiation poison not radioactive poisoning radiation poisoning i think um and then of course kind of towards the end of the film um after everything's happy and everything you kind of see a piece of godzilla it's like godzilla's heart it's kind of beating and you see that it's like slowly regenerating so, hey, Godzilla is not completely dead. This might be, you know, just kind of like, oh, you know, it's uh, kind of a one and done type of thing that we have with Shin Godzilla. Or it could be kind of the revamp of some of the Toho Godzilla uh, movies. Maybe this Godzilla will come back. Uh, maybe he'll be even more powerful. We'll get to see some... Uh, action with Godzilla and Toho monsters not made by Legendary. I also got to say with the special effects, I mean, when Godzilla's like chasing them, there's like one part where I think the water effect, it was like, it was supposed to be water, like a lot of water because it's Godzilla, but it looked like it was, you know, a small miniature version of like, I guess a small version of the water. It didn't have enough weight, I felt. Um, but besides that, and, you know, I'm a Godzilla fan, so I can kind of deal with it, since I've had miniatures, um, in my Godzilla film. Um, the tanks, I think, were also another part where they didn't look quite that good, but it was, like, instantly something that's going to be blown up. So, and before, the tanks were literally just little, you know, little toy cars and trucks, uh, attacking Godzilla. So, like I said, I can, I can deal with it. It's fine. Um, besides that, the CGI of Godzilla, he looks amazing. Even at the night scene when he's out in his Jurassic Park form is amazing. We need to have an entire Jurassic Park S movie of Godzilla as something small. And it could be like Baby Godzilla. We can do that. We can have an aggressive Baby Godzilla who doesn't want to save humanity. And like another film, and it's like Jurassic Park. And then Big Godzilla shows up. Maybe they fight something. Or maybe it's just something else. I just want to see more small Godzillas like this. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, pretty much everybody who dies... I guess besides some of, like, in the very beginning with the mechanics. Everybody else who dies, you kind of don't know who they are. You know, a whole bunch of people get blown away in the concussive blast. All of the mechanics get, like, Godzilla, like... Bites one, flings him off somewhere. He stomps them with his tail because they start shooting at him. Um, but nobody really like dies who we care about besides the thief who survives with like an eye injury, I think like a broken arm, and maybe radiation poisoning, or it's just uh, something having to deal with Godzilla. Maybe it's the like Godzilla G cells are attached to her too. Maybe that's why she survived? <gasps> Fan theory that I just thought about right now. Maybe the reason that she survived is she somehow adopted Godzilla's healing function. So going forward, she's going to have some type of connection or link or psychic link to Godzilla. So Godzilla gets to not be as aggressive as he was before and can help them take on the next monster which is probably going to be, uh, a, you know, a King Ghidorah or uh, who is besides Ghidorah? What Godzilla take on? Maybe they want to build a Mecha Godzilla. It's been done a lot though with the humans doing Mecha Godzilla. Um, but yeah, that that's going to be the fan theory. The reason she survived, she got Godzilla cells, and now she can heal. And that's why she wasn't completely dead. 
Or maybe it's just radiation poisoning. Or maybe it's something completely uh, something else that I'm just missing because I, I, don't, I just saw the movie one time. And these are my thoughts. But uh, I think with this one, they could use this Godzilla. Because they kind of set it up as like a sequel with Godzilla like surviving. I think they could have Godzilla uh, fight other monsters. We could do Godzilla uh, Zero. I guess Godzilla Minus One. We could do Godzilla Zero where Tokyo is kind of, or not, I guess Japan and Tokyo is kind of back up a little bit. And then it'd be an attack by another monster. King Ghidorah can show up. Or Gigan. I, I don't like Gigan. I like Godzilla versus Gigan. Saw it a lot. Gigan is one of the cooler designs, I think. Uh. I don't really know. I mean, uh, essentially, uh, all the other ones. I guess you 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 know what? Well, I was gonna say Destroya, but Destroya is like an oxygen destroying monster. Because I was saying, oh, you know, with Godzilla being like blown up like that, maybe one is like his heart, and that's something, and then other parts of Godzilla attach to something else and make other kaiju that way. The kind of all of the kaiju's are kind of like Godzilla. Uh, you know, maybe one of them, I don't know, there was some radiated, like, uh, uh, Hydra thing. You know, like an actual hy Hydra. And maybe that could be King Ghidorah. Uh, maybe one of them could be a sea turtle and we can get some gamma eye action. We could have, uh, what else? There's Mothra. I guess could be something. I don't know how the G-cells would get to Mothra, though. Uh, Gigan could be some type of creature, deep sea creature. That would be kind of interesting. We could do something completely different. We could have a new deep sea creature uh, as Godzilla monster. We could do something completely different, completely new, based on Godzilla. Or a bunch of small Godzillas. Because, you know, it's... There could be other Godzillas out there. We could do a Jurassic Park Godzilla thing. That would be interesting, right? Godzilla Park. Oh, Godzilla plus one. The plus one is the other version of Godzilla. Oh, we could bring back Space Godzilla. Possibly Biollante. A aquatic plant version of Biollante could be interesting as well there's a lot of cool things you could do with this if you want it to i think um or it could just be you know a one-off and just you know really good film right now it's a 8.5 on imdb it has a 98 from audiences on rotten tomatoes and a 97 uh tomato meter uh from 75 reviews uh, I think there was, was it just the one? Oh wow, there are a lot of new ones have come in. Uh, uh, Roger Moore from Movie Nation. Uh, he liked what he was trying to do, but he was uh, timid in his themes. Might introduce the films needed Japanese audience shows. Hold on. There's many in themes he might introduce to the film's native Japanese Japanese audience shows, and it muzzles his movie monster or his monster movie. You know what, Roger Moore? I don't know if I really agree with that. I think the Japanese probably fairly well aware of nuclear explosions and the aftermath. I think, uh, like I, I like, when I saw the black rain in the theater, I literally said, "Oh shit." Are you the only one, Roger Moore? Roger Moore literally saw, gave... He saw Lady Ballers and gave it a 1. Why would you even look at watch Lady Ballers? It looks stupid. Um, so that's one. Oh, here we go. Adam uh, Olinger. Don't worry, Adam Olinger. You no longer are the only person giving Godzilla Minus 1 a negative rating. Because you thought that it was terribly paced and boring characters. 
which I also disagree with. I thought the pacing was, if anything, maybe a little fast. Because you're kind of going from, like, you know, year to year, which I guess kind of has to happen and everything, because you're kind of showing up, you know, Japan healing from the war and the bombings and everything. So if anything, you could probably have slowed the movie down slightly. You probably could have done an hour, 30 minutes, and I probably would have been fine, or two hours and 30 minutes, and a probably or 45 minutes, and I probably still would have been fine with it. And I think that's it. So don't worry, Tony, from half the movies... Uh, your friend, Adam Olinger, who was on your Godzilla show, uh, what is it, Pod Monster versus the, the Pod Monster, or something like that, I don't know the name of it, because it was purposefully bad, I think it was based off of Maddox's, uh, his Godzilla show that he did, um, but yeah, <clears throat> uh, I guess I'm minus one, it's one of the first First time I've ever been scared of Godzilla. Uh, Corey Coleman. Um, yeah, he's pretty terrifying in it. Maybe Shin Godzilla. Uh, I don't know. Have you, did you... Corey Coleman, did you review Shin Godzilla? Uh, fuck it, we're doing it live. Shin... I don't think he's seen Shin Godzilla. Or either that or this is all... Oh, this is all 2003. Uh. Shin? Any Shins? No Shins on this page. When did Shin Godzilla come out? I don't even remember. It's 2020... Ah. 2016. Yeah, we're really far. Can I... Can I search by year? I can't... I, okay. Okay. I totally don't have never seen uh, used Rotten Tomatoes, and it's really showing. Uh, you're watching some older movies, or reviewing older movies. Where are we at? Oh my god, we're still in 2013. Dear god. 2003. I guess like you have to go until we're out of 2003 territory, right? 2001, 22, 2003. Am I just... Linoleum. Infinity Pool. Has been from okay, I think I'm in 22. Holy fuck. Okay. Um, you know what? Let me just do it this way. Shin. Godzilla. 86%! Certified fresh. So, okay, so why is... What is the certified fresh supposed to be? Because Godzilla minus one has a higher score currently. Uh... No. All right. I don't think Mr. Coleman. Saw Shin Godzilla. That makes sense. I think Shin Godzilla is probably a more intense. Closest to Godzilla has been scary for a long time. Uh, yes. Okay. Of course, you could have seen it and just not reviewed it. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Two hours too. Uh. <clears throat> Rotten Tomatoes. What is certified? Oh my god. Rotten okay, here we go. So, yeah. So 60%, at least 60% is fresh status. Less than 60% rotten status. Uh, gray, there's nothing available. Certified fresh. Distinction awarded to the best reviewed movies and TV shows. In order to qualify, it has to have a consistent tomato meter score, 75% or higher, at least five reviews from top critics, wide release. Films in wide release must have a minimum of 80 reviews. This also applies going 
from limited to wide release. Films in limited release must have a minimum of 40 reviews. Only individual seasons of a TV show are eligible. Each must have a minimum of 20 reviews. Or only the bare minimum for to qualify for distinction. The film does not automatically become certified fresh when it meets those qual uh, requirements. Uh, tomato meter score must be consistent and unlikely to deviate significantly for a film or TV show as March certified fresh. Certified fresh movie or TV show whose score drops and remains consistently below 30% will lose certified fresh destination. And yeah, we already know the audience score. Okay. So it has to have. So that's why Shin Godzilla is fresh. Nobody reviewed Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla 20, 2002? 2002? Who in the world? Oh, is it because it's the Raymond? Okay. Okay. That makes more sense. I saw Godzilla 1985 with a 27% score, and I was like, who in the world gave Godzilla 1985 a 27% as critics? Uh. Oh, you're just trying to be Tom Long. You're just trying to be snarky. But I believe this is the American version of the film because there's another Godzilla 1985 from 1984. But it doesn't have any reviews. So that might be the Japanese version. Maybe. Possibly. And post on the phone. Okay, so it only counts if he posts this there. Okay. So we need top critics, at least five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We have nineteen top critics saying yes. Or clamped. Okay, Frank Schleck from Hollywood Reporter, top credit. What the fuck does verklempt mean? Verklempt. Overcome with emotion. Okay, it's a, it's a Yiddish word. That's why I have no idea what verklempt means. Okay. Schlick. Hollywood Reporter. Okay. Wow. Whatever. I guess I'm talking about, you know, uh, White Light, Black Rain. Documentary about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so I guess you can use verklempt. Verklempt. I want to say ver because it starts with a V, but it is done with an F. It's verklempt. Hmm. And then all critics. Does it tell me how many all critics reviewed you, Godzilla film? 75 critics. Okay. Okay, so we need like five more reviews to be at the 80. And then I guess, you know, unlikely to change. So we're at, I, I guess, I guess Godzilla got a wide release. I mean, if it's limited release, then we're already there. But, uh, I guess it's, you know, international. I guess this is the Y release. So yeah, uh, so this uh, if you want to add my official credit score to Rotten Tomatoes, I give it a plus. So you only need four more. And this movie can be certified fresh, if you care about that. I just think it's really good. Well, 
Uh, I left my review on the IMDb as well as Stage Z. So it thinks Zero is my last name. Yep. Yeah. Godzilla, you're so cool. Until next time, folks, I have been Remag, and I'll see you next time on Setting the Stage with Stage Zero. And remember, I'm lightning slow, and I remember you all in therapy. <laughs>